Hello, my name is Carx82, and welcome back to my Gled Clock series. Today I'm actually back in my test world, and today we are going to look at the Electrical Blast Furnace. Now, to move into the medium voltage age, we are going to need... Let's see if I can find it, actually. The machine hull here is going to need aluminum, and aluminum needs to be cooked in the blast furnace. Now if you look at the recipe, so one aluminum dust equals one ingots, and it needs 120 EU per tick, it takes 44 seconds, requires 100,000 EU, and it requires 1700 Kelvin in the blast furnace. Um, now the 120 EU per tick is where we run into a problem because we are in the LVH, so our generators are only producing 32 EU per tick. So if I put the food in there, that is producing 32 EU per tick, which is not going to be enough for a blast furnace. So let's take a look at how we can solve this problem. So first, we're going to need the electrical blast furnace. And we are going to need an input slot, which we put the items in. We are going to need a output bus, which is where the items come out. You can also add a output hatch. I'm sorry, wrong one. I need an input hatch because some recipes some recipes use gas or liquid. So you can put the input hatch on if you want, but if we look again at the aluminum recipe, uh, the aluminum recipe does not require fluid, but you can put it on there if you want, be prepared for later. Now the question comes in is, how do we supply this with another power? Now before we have aluminum, what you're going to have to do is supply it with LV power, and if we look at this, it says voltage in 32 LV, amperage up to 2. So this can pull 2 amps, so this one hatch can actually accept 64 power from a source. So if you want, we can add two of these input hatches. So this is 128, so that would actually work. But I find with cable loss, unless your generators are right next to this, it is actually easier to put three hatches. And I'm actually going to do, or underneath, I find the easiest. So I'm just going to click on all those, put the input hatches underneath. And the rest is going to be these heat proof machine casings. Alright, so that is the lowest layer. The middle layer are going to be these coils, and I'll get into the different types of coils in a second. But to start out with, you're going to need the cooper nickel. And this is two layers with the hollow one in the middle. And then on top, we're just going to need to cap it off with the heat, mach heat proof machine casings. All right, so once the hatches and everything turn green, you know you've set it up correctly. So it says idling. If I have something missing, it's because invalid structure. Now if we take a look at this, it says max EU per tick, 192 MV, which is MV power, 192. So that's perfect. Our aluminum recipe needs 120. So let us set up, uh, we'll just do, how about we do superconductor wires? Well, no, actually, you're probably going to be using 10 cables. Let me use 10 cables. How about we do times 8? That's probably good. So we will... There it is. Bring these pipes down. 
are these cables. Connect all the cables, <coughs> the hatches, with the LV power. And there we go, it should be getting power. Now I could put, I have one generator generating 32 EU per tick, so let's see what happens when I put the aluminum in. Let's get a stack of that. If I put one aluminum in here, it's going to go, this machine needs more energy, which is pretty obvious. We're only producing 32. Now there's multiple ways we can go about doing this to supply this machine with enough energy if we want. As long as you have enough cables, we can add more diesel generators or generators, whatever you're using, steam generators or gas turbines. So we need to get it above 120. So this is 32, 32, 32. That is, what is it, 96? So we need one more. I'll face those all towards the cables. And then I need to supply these with the, uh, the diesel. All right, so we'll put those in. We'll start running. All right, and there we go. We should be supplying enough power with the cable loss. This will probably go away afterwards, unless I am mistaken here. But I believe it uh, is getting enough power. I think that message will go away. Now the problem here is the cable loss. So this is 1, so this is 31 from 3, and then this is 31. And it might be just a little short with the cable loss. It might be 1 or 2 EU with the loss in the power. Since we're producing 128, let's see if we can put one more in and see what happens. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting enough power. So you can do this. This is perfectly capable of producing aluminum. The problem with this is you're going to have to set up a lot of infrastructure to produce enough steam or diesel or light fuel. You can put light fuel in these also. So a lot of more infrastructure in producing the fuel needed. Now the other way to do this, and I actually find this easier, let's just break these, is to supply it with a battery buffer. Now I will use battery buffer. Let's do the LV. Uh, we'll do nine slot, I guess. Set and then I will let's put uh, one diesel generator down. There we go, it's producing. Let's get some batteries in here. Um, I'm only going to put eight in here. These wires can handle eight. This output's nine, so you don't want to output that much. Alright, so that will be filling up the batteries, but the batteries are immediately draining from the machine here. Now if I actually use this, so this isn't, we see this is not running. It's not getting enough power, I'm only producing 32. And these aren't filling up because it's immediately draining it and being wasted. So if you get this soft hammer, there's multiple ways to make it. If you right click on this, it'll turn this machine off. Working paused. And there we go. That will start filling up these batteries. Now, obviously these are empty right now. Let us, I'm going to cut and when these fill up a bit, we will see how this works with one generator and a battery buffer. All right, I'm back, and the I have about four, four and a half batteries filled up here. Now, if we remember these input hatches, <laughs> not letting me. Uh, oh, of course, they don't have a UI. Uh, these input hatches uh, accept accepts up to two amps. 
So these can pull, I have three of them, they can actually pull six, which says 192. So they can pull from six batteries here. Now if I turn this on, there we go, this is draining. As we can see, it's draining from a couple batteries here. Looks like it's pulling four amps. Yeah, it's pulling from four batteries to get the required 120 U per tick and with a little bit of loss in the wires. But as we can see, the blast furnace is running. This will go away after this um, process finishes. Using one generator here and a battery buffer, I can actually run the blast furnace at full steam. Now obviously, I'm not producing 120 EU per tick here, so I can't run this permanently here. But for now, that is actually working for you to get you into the next stage. Now once we move up here, we can actually replace some of this. Now say we've run the blast furnace, we've got all the aluminum that we need and we have crafted a let's just use the floor I guess a floor slot battery buffer so now this takes medium voltage batteries we can put those in so there we go those will start filling up and these are going to output this will output uh, MV power. And to get the MP power, obviously we need better cables. So let's do, do these. Now, if I attach these energy input hatches to MV, obviously they're gonna explode. It's the wrong type of hatch. So we can actually switch it to the MV hatch. And now this one, I only need one of these now, since this accepts up to 256 energy. Let me take a look at this, 256. I only need the one hatch. Let's turn that. And then I can actually just attach it right to my battery buffer. And obviously, these aren't filling up very fast here because I have the LV stuff. But as you see, actually, I'll actually just leave that. Put that back in there. As we can see, the medium voltage batteries are actually filling up with LV power. Now, once again, once these have filled up, this is only going to need to pull one amp. It needs 120 for the recipe. It's going to pull one amp of 128 EU, but it does need the required amount of the required amount. So it's going to need 106,000 EU per tick, or 106,000 EU. So if I put this in here, it's going to run out of EU before uh, it runs. But if you let these fill up a bit, then you can run the blast furnace and we should be able to get what we need the MV machines and then we can upgrade this eventually once we get some more aluminum and move up we can replace that with a the advanced diesel generator There we go. Now that's filling up even faster. Obviously, we're going to have to upgrade our diesel generator. Whatever fuel you're putting in, you're going to have to upgrade that a bit because that pulls more fuel. But here we go. So we have now medium voltage, one wire going into a medium hatch. And what this actually does for the blast furnace, not necessarily this recipe, but this actually increases the speed with which recipes will work. Now if we look at this, it's going pretty slowly here. Let's 
going about, I think, what, 45 seconds was the recipe? Yeah, about 45 seconds. Now, if we replace this, say, with uh, uh, EV, well, let's do HV. Or we can do EV battery buffer. All right, so now we have you get the Lapatron, is that tier three? There we go. Yeah, so that's tier four. If I'm not mistaken. This may all blow up. I can't remember. Yeah, that's tier four. And then HV is the Lapatronic, yeah. All right, so now these batteries are filling up with EV power. If I put the EV hatch, so the energy hatch, the EV energy hatch, on the blast furnace here, and connect it with the, let's do titanium wires. My inventory is getting full here. So now this is being upgraded. This is being. This is pulling in for. It can use up to 4,000, which will do multiple times the recipe. So whatever the aluminum. The aluminum is 120 U per tick. So times 4 would be the HV. And that so that would be 480. If you want to do HP power, it'd be 480 U per tick. I mean, it would half the recipe, so it would only do 20 seconds. Then, if you want, you can supply it with EV power, which would be another four times that, so 480 times four, so 19 something. I think 1980 is it? 1920. So it's going to use 1920 U per tick, but then it's going to half it again, so it'll be down to 10 seconds. Now we don't really have enough power in here. I can add a couple more diesel generators. Let's do HV. The turbo diesel, just to get some more faster power production here. Let's turn those. And there we go. All right. Now we can see that's going much faster. Now if I put a, another aluminum in here, now we can look how much faster this is going. This is consuming a lot more power, but it's been halved and then halved again. So it's only taken about 10 seconds now. So at first, running on LV power, aluminum takes a long time. It takes 45 seconds, but as you slowly upgrade your power source, you can keep upgrading your energy hatches and do the recipes faster and faster. Each tier will... So extreme... Uh, the, it's a medium voltage recipe, so this is normal. Then HV is going to half it the time, then EV will half, then IV another half, and so on and so forth. Until you're getting down to a fraction of a second, it's going to be producing these items. So that is the way to get your first aluminum in the Greg Block packs. The only other thing with the Blast Furnace that you need to know about is the coils. If we looked at the aluminum recipe, it requires the 1700K or 1700 Kelvin, which is the heat. And if we take a look at coils, we have Cooper Nickel, which is the first one we can have access to. Then there's Canthal, Nichrome, Tungsten Steel, so forth. So there's a whole bunch of them. And they each have an increasing heat capacity. So this is 1800 Kelvin. So this can do any recipe under 1800 Kelvin. This one is 2700 on Kelvin, 3600, 4500, so forth. And the better the 
the metals, the harder, the more you're going to need. So the blast furnace needs 1800 Kelvin. So if you want to upgrade it to Canthal, which is the next one up, that'll be 1800. And then if you want the Nichrome to upgrade that again, that is 2700. So you're going to have to get the Canthal coils and you're just going to replace them. I'll show you in a second. And then you're going to cook the Nichrome in the Canthal and then we'll be able to replace the Canthal with the Nichrome and so on and so forth up the line. So then tungsten steel will need Nichrome heat and then the HSS will need the tungsten steel heat and so forth all the way up to superconducting coal block, which is 9001 Kelvin. It's over 9,000. So in order to do that, it's basically the exact same. Same thing, you just replace them. So let's say we cooked up the coil. Now the coil recipes, if you take a look at them, are two times of the wires. So whatever, like cupernickel is two times cupernickel, canthal, Necrom, so forth. This is two stacks. You're gonna need 16 of these, which is two stacks of the ingots to get enough. It's four stacks of wires, two stacks of ingots. So you're gonna need two stacks of Cooper Nickel, two stacks of Canthal. So it's pretty easy to remember in that regard. But to replace them, all you do is break the Cooper Nickel and replace it with the Canthal. That should form. And now it says 2700. Now we'll be able to put the Canthal in, or maybe the Nichrome at this point. There we go, and then it cooks the Canthal. We're using quite a lot of power here, obviously. We're only producing a thousand, and we're using over four thousand, or almost two thousand. But we can see with the battery buffers that. We can be producing a lot less power, and then if we save it up, we can use it in bursts when it's needed. You can't run this 24-7, obviously, because you're not producing enough. So there's multiple ways. You can either make multiple generators and feed that into the blast furnace, or you can use the battery buffers. Store it up the EU when you're not using the blast furnace, and then when you use it, let it go and run until it drains the batteries a bit and then you can turn it off and then they'll start filling up again. Now if we, one last thing, if we put the, let's say we want to do tungsten steel here. If we put the tungsten steel in, this isn't working. Why isn't this working? Because it doesn't have enough heat. There it goes. So this requires 3,000 Kelvin. So you're going to have to work your way up the different coils and progress through that way. Now one thing I did notice, all these heat, machine, heat proof machine casings can actually be replaced with any of the parts. So you, if you want, you can put the energy hatch up here if you want. You can put the output bus, input bus up here if you want. I found it actually... It helped to have multiple, not the energy hatch, the input hatch. Where are we? There we go. I found it easier to have multiple input hatches, and then I can fill that with whatever different fluids that I need. So I could put titanium fluid in this, I could put oxygen in this, I could put nitrogen in this one. And it will know whatever you put the the items in the input bus, it'll know which one to use. So in that regard, you can actually just keep these filled. Uh, but yeah, that's the electrical blast furnace. It's required for progression. And uh, hopefully that was a bit informative. So thanks for watching, and have a good one.